You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. Good evening. I'm Briggs LaSavage filling in tonight for Tony and Kristen. 260 people are out of work tonight. Duluth Aviation Company AAR announced that it is closing down permanently. That's a big blow to the city's economy. CBS 3's John Cardinelli is live outside of AAR. John, what have you learned? Briggs, AAR is closely tied to Duluth's aviation sector. They refurbish planes for companies like United, inspecting and redoing everything from the plane's engine to the seating. It's unclear at this time how the company shutting down will impact the other parts of Duluth's aviation sector or the city's economy as a whole. The downturn in the airline industry due to COVID-19 is certainly a factor in their decision to close. AAR closing will also impact Lake Superior College's aviation program. Daniel Fanning, president of external relations at LSC, called AAR a tremendous partner in supporting their students and helping them with jobs after graduating. While the future of the program at LSC is uncertain at this point, Fanning is hopeful students will have a place to learn. And because we partner with other aviation partners, including Delta and even Cirrus and, and a lot of our partners on the aviation maintenance as well as the pilot side, our program is probably going to be okay. It's just a matter of how do we make adjustments going forward? How long is it going to take to get back to that sense of normalcy? Fanning says this will impact between 50 and 75 mechanical aviation students enrolled into the program. Now, Briggs, we reached out to AAR for comment. We have not heard back. We also reached out to the city of Duluth. We have not heard back from them as well. All right. Thank you, John. We're sure to have much more on this story as the night goes on. Well, meanwhile, in a statement today, Duluth Airport Authority leaders say they were sad to hear the news. Executive Director of the Airport Authority, Tom Werner, says the loss will have a big impact on the aviation sector and this region as a whole. Werner added that they plan to continue to support their partners, and he also pointed to the area's strong aviation sector and new infrastructure that he says will put the area in a good position for when new opportunities arise. Meanwhile, more major news tonight as Minnesota leaders announced new guidelines allowing more businesses to open across the state on June 1st. Bars and restaurants will be allowed to open, but only for outdoor seating and at a limited capacity. Tables will have to be six feet away from each other. Servers will have to wear masks and reservations will be required. Salons, barbershops and tattoo parlors can open on June 1st too, but only at 25% capacity. Again, masks and reservations are required there too. Campgrounds and charter boats can also open following social distancing and sanitation guidelines. So I understand the frustrations. I understand the desire. But I simply, the science is too strong. We can't pretend like this isn't a big deal. We can't pretend with 100,000 dead Americans that this is just going to go away. Gyms, fitness centers, and entertainment venues will not be allowed to open yet. The state also laid out the next phases of allowing places to reopen and social gatherings to grow on the state's COVID-19 dashboard. We have much more on that on our website. And here's a live look at Duluth's Spirit Mountain now, where we learned earlier today that they will not be opening until at least this winter. City officials say most of the Ski Hill staff will also stay laid off until then. That means a summer without their adventure park and other attractions. The ski hill had to close down earlier this winter due to COVID-19, which meant more financial trouble for the already struggling organization. Mayor Emily Larson announced today that she'll be putting together a Spirit Mountain Task Force, and their goal is to develop a path forward for the ski hill. Larson says Spirit Mountain is unique in that it doesn't qualify for the Paytech Paycheck Protection Program. Officials are 100% sure that they aren't 100% sure about the future of Spirit Mountain, but they hope that this task force will help keep it afloat. What's the appropriate amount of support for that then? It could be that that is an entity that just needs more financial support in these very specific ways because that's the operating model that is going to make that work. Well, during that same press conference today, we also learned that Mayor Larson will take a 10% pay cut through the rest of this year. She hopes that will help the city through its dire budget situation. City Council President Gary Anderson and Councilor at Large Eric Forsman plan to do the same. They encouraged other city councilors to take a pay cut as well. The city is also working on reducing liquor license fees and other fees for small businesses. They are also asking voters to vote by mail during the upcoming primary and general elections this year. 
The Trump administration is continuing to push to reopen the country as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention pushes out updated recommendations. Natalie Brand is at the White House with more. President Trump is hosting two more state governors at the White House from Kansas and Arkansas as every state now moves towards partially reopening. All 50 states in America have now begun to partially open up. We have a ways to go. Uh, but uh, we can see light at end of the tunnel. Vice President Mike Pence traveled to Florida where he delivered personal protective equipment to a nursing home and met with the state's governor, Ron DeSantis. The meetings with governors come as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has now published 60 pages of detailed guidance for reopening. That's something that lawmakers and local leaders had called for after reports the initial document was shelved by the White House. Those guidelines specifically target schools, restaurants and bars, child care programs, workplaces, youth programs and camps, and mass transit. Not every state and every county and every jurisdiction has the same infec infection rate. Meanwhile, President Trump tweeted threats to cut federal funding to Michigan and Nevada because those states are ramping up absentee ballot applications due to the pandemic. I would appreciate any federal partnership that wants to stay focused on solving problems and, and not get into politics. We got to take politics out of this crisis moment. Nevada's governor called the threat inappropriate and outrageous. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. The White House is also separating itself after CBS News confirmed reports that the president's re-election campaign is recruiting doctors to publicly promote his views on the coronavirus pandemic and his response efforts. Administration officials say the White House already has the nation's top doctors. Well, let's take a look, quick look now at the cases in our tri-state area. In Minnesota, there are more than 17,000 cases with more than 700 deaths and more than 11,000 recoveries. In Wisconsin, there are more than 13,000 confirmed cases with 467 deaths. And in Michigan, there are more than 53,000 cases and more than 5,000 deaths. Looking worldwide, there are more than 5 million cases, more than 300,000 deaths, and nearly 2 million recoveries. Well, Dave joins us now for a quick look at the weather. And Dave, nice out there today. As usual, though, Briggs, as it's been for the past week or two, too nice. Fire <laughs> danger is still threatening. We are hoping for relief come Friday night in the form of showers and thunderstorms, but from now through tomorrow, it's going to be pretty dry and very beautiful. So here's a live look at what's going on at Cass Lake. And the sky is blue and the conditions are calm. And the trees are trying to break out with their new leaves here. And with temperatures as warm as they've been inland, that's probably going to happen very rapidly. Here's our map for the upper Midwest. One more day tomorrow with the dry high pressure holding on to us. And then the thunder will roll from the west into our region. But not for Thursday. Thursday should be another gorgeous day like you're seeing here near Ely. Out the door, partly cloudy. Coming back home, partly cloudy. Partly cloudy in between. Temperatures start at 47, finish at 70. I heard a rumor that we made it to 70 today, Briggs, here in Duluth. The first time since October 9th. Well, we hold on to it. I'll let you know with the seven-day forecast coming up. In a few more minutes. Well, I can only hope so. Thanks, Dave. Well, still to come on Live at 5, celebrating Main Street reconstruction in Hayward. Plus, good news for the Fortune Bay Resort in Tower. City by City is next. Plus, tonight at 6, we're learning more about the AAR closure and their ties to the city of Duluth. Watch Anthony Mann weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on Live Local CBS 3 Duluth. Are you dealing with anxiety or stress? Hi, this is Sharon at The Essence of Health. Theanine Serene can help you relax and take the edge off. Find the home of your dreams with Homes by Edmonds. Whether you're buying or selling, trust Duluth's oldest real estate company, Homes by Edmonds LLP. Sunday mornings at 1030 on CBS3. I don't know how we would have survived without Mediacom. We, uh, we have five kids, and we have Mediacom for all of our internet and all of our cable services. So I'm stuck in my house, but at the same time, I'm connected to people all over the world. It's been fantastic. Right now, we all feel like the world is in a standstill. The internet has played a huge role in allowing us to stay connected to our jobs and stay connected with the ones that we love. We couldn't do it without Mediacom. Hi, John with Prime Appliance. Well, the third time's a charm, so we're extending our big 6% instant rebate sale on our entire in-stock selection. 
Get high-end Beko dishwashers in stock at amazing sale prices. Beko's come with a two-year warranty and is a great performing dishwasher. Starting at just $4.99 plus another 6% off, pick it up and save even more or set up delivery and installation. Financing always available, Prime Appliance and Superior, the best place to buy your appliances. Let us prove it to you. Always on the go, but want to keep up with the day's news? Don't worry. Now we are wherever you are. Traveling? No problem. Stream wherever, whenever with live local CBS3. Hello, I'm John Lawyer, the owner of Lawyer Cleaning and Disaster Restoration. We know you are worried about the coronavirus, and we are too. As a first response business, we are prepared to protect our employees and customers. We also realize that if your property has a fire or flood, it cannot wait. We have protective PPE and hospital-grade disinfectants to kill COVID-19, along with other infectious disease. If you experience a disaster in your home or business, Lawyer Cleaning and Disaster Restoration will be here to help. Well, welcome back to CBS3 Live at 5. Here's a live look from Bayfield. Dave Anderson will have your full weather forecast coming up in just a few minutes. But first, we're going to take a look at what's happening in the rest of our region. Hayward is celebrating the completion of a major reconstruction project. Plus, Fortune Bay Casino is preparing for a soft reopening. That and more as we take you around the Northland, city by city. The city of Hayward celebrated the reopening of its main street today. The, si the street was under construction since March 9th, and today the city held a ribbon cutting to promote its reopening. Hayward's Main Street has also broken into the top 25 for the Main Street America competition. And there is still time to vote to help them make the top 10. You can find that link on our website. Now over to Tower, Minnesota, where Fortune Bay is planning for a soft reopening of their casino. Usually, the casino operates 24-7, but due to COVID-19, they've decided to cut back their hours, opening from 9 a.m. to 1 a.m. The resort pool and Tamarack Buffet will stay closed. While the Boys Fort Band is recognized as a sovereign nation, their shutdown policies line up with Walls' orders. Well, now to Cloquet, where the City Economic Development Fund is providing a safety net to area small businesses. The net comes in the form of $300,000 worth in small business loans. This is in addition to the federal and state grants already available to area businesses. To qualify for that loan, you must be a business located in Cloquet, and you must demonstrate that you already applied for federal and state grants. Well, if there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, send us an email, and it might be featured as we go around the Northland, city by city. Still to come on Live at 5, a superior brewery plans a unique reopening. And here's a live look at the iffy area where things won't be iffy until Friday night when the storm chance rolls in on the dry side until then. And we'll talk about the seven-day forecast in more detail coming up after our break. For the news that impacts you most, turn to live local CBS 3. Wake up with Austin and Jenna at 5 a.m. DBS, your all things basement company. Does your home have uneven or sloping floors? How about cracked drywall, stair stepping cracks, or bowed basement walls? You may have a problem with your foundation. Call the specialists at DBS. They thoroughly inspect your property and provide a permanent solution to your foundation problem. We offer a fully transferable warranty, unmatched in our area. Contact DBS, your all things basement company, for a free, no obligation estimate. Call or visit us online. DBS, helping your family have a healthy, safe, and comfortable home. Holding a phone takes precious attention away from the road. That's why handheld cell phone use is now illegal in Wisconsin work zones. And fines start at $40. Driving deserves your undivided attention. It's about safety for workers and for all motorists. So when you see orange cones, please put down the phone. The Wisconsin DOT urges you to eliminate distractions and be especially alert in work zones. We all want to do our part to keep our community safe. Thank you for your efforts to stay home, but you shouldn't stay home no matter what. If you have a medical emergency, call 911 immediately. Our emergency departments are open and ready to care for every type of illness or injury. If you have a chronic condition, call your clinic and we can help manage your care. Our facilities are clean and safe. Please, seek care when you need it. Essentia Health and St. Luke's are open and ready to care for you.
Park Outlet is open for business. Now save up to 40% off store-wide. Northland, when you want the most new country, make the switch to Cat Country, 98.9 KTCO. I never met a girl like you. What makes you country? Number one for the most new country. Get your news on the go. The CBS 3 mobile app. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Well, here's a live look what's going on around Ascove, and it is a beautiful day there as well. Just a few clouds in that blue sky, and we can see that the green leaves are still trying to push forth. With a little moisture, maybe they'll come forth, and the temperatures for the weekend will be good enough to help things grow. Indeed, cooler by the lake, but warmer inland again. Tomorrow, places like International Falls just might be perilously close to 80 degrees. And with the rest of us in the 60s and 70s, that's not so bad either. So, how are things looking at the airport in Duluth? Well, right now it's 68 degrees. We have a relative humidity reading of 50%. And so the fire danger today isn't near critical, but it is still moderate to high for most of our area. So be careful again. Easterly wind, it's going only 11 miles per hour rather than 21, so that's a victory as well. 1,020 millibars for the air pressure on the high side, and that helps explain the blue sky. Current regional temperatures, there we go, cooler by the lake, warmer inland. 80 for Watersme, 80 for Ironwood and Hayward, 81 at Solon Springs Airport, but oh, cooler by the lake for Ashland, 68. Only 56 for folks in Superior. 70 creeping in towards two harbors, at least a little bit inland there. 81 Moose Lake, 81 Orin International Falls, and 66 Silver Bay. So temperatures like this, again with us tomorrow. Sunny conditions like today, with us again tomorrow. It's Friday night when we get a chance for rain finally pushing into our region. And right now, high pressure's got a hold of us in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the UP. Boy, you really have to squint and look hard and get a microscope and a magnifying glass out to see any clouds in the sky this time around, but that will change eventually. Won't change tomorrow. Another day with the middle part of the country covered by a dry high pressure cell. But once we get past Thursday into Friday, then lower pressure from the west starts to creep towards our region. It's not an overly powerful low, but it may pack enough punch and have enough moisture for some thunderstorms beginning in the afternoon Friday and then sticking around perhaps until Memorial Day morning. But for Memorial Day itself in the afternoon, it should start to clear up. Let's eye up now the forecast for the next seven days. And in Minnesota tonight, oh, 40 to 43 by the lake and 47 to about 50 inland with a partly cloudy sky. Into Wisconsin and Michigan we go with a partly cloudy sky there as well. And low temps from 47 to 50. Tomorrow, another sunny day for Wisconsin and the UP with highs getting towards 70, even closer to the lake, 70 to 75. And for Minnesota, 60s by the lake, but 70 to even 80 again, farther inland. Then the change comes Friday afternoon and evening when we get a 50% chance of thunder rolling. What is that, Garth Brooks? 70 around the Twin Ports, warmer inland. Through the weekend, 60% thunderstorm chance both Saturday and Sunday, 30% Monday morning, then Memorial Day itself clears up in the afternoon. And then at least partial sunshine sticks with us Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, thank you, Dave. Well, downtown Hayward businesses are ready to make up for lost revenue after the state Supreme Court blocked Wisconsin's Safer at Home order last week. This year, the town took a hit with the COVID-19 pandemic and several major summer events being canceled, including the Governor's Fishing Opener, Musky Fest, and the Lumberjack Championships. Despite all that, community members say they're expecting a good summer. The good news for us is we feel there's so many other reasons and activities uh, and fun things to do to enjoy in the North Woods. Well, some businesses are following COVID-19 safety protocols while people shop. While some Wisconsin bars rushed to open last week, one superior brewery says they're using Minnesota's policy as their guidance. Earthrider Brewing has been serving beer to go out of their tap room since coronavirus shut their doors. Now they are planning to fully reopen on June 1st. The biggest change, though, will be that they will keep their tap room closed and move all business outside. Owner Tim Nelson says the move to Earthrider Festival grounds will make it much easier, easier for people to social distance. He says the best part about opening will be reconnecting with his community. 
I'm so excited to service the, our community and get our friends back here and, um, and be safe about it, of course, and, and uh, uh, just, uh, just be able to be out in the sunshine. A lot of sunshine on the way, it sounds like. Nelson says the outdoor space will include a stage for live music, grills for customers to use, and several picnic tables, too, that will be sanitized after each use. Another summer event at Bayfront Festival Park has been canceled, though, due to COVID-19. The third annual All Pints North Craft Beer Festival will not happen this year. It was scheduled for August 1st. The Minnesota Craft Brewers Guild says while they can't offer a refund on any tickets that you might have already purchased, you can still use those tickets for next year's event. And this year's Duluth Air Show has been grounded too. Event organizers announced today that they will not hold the 2020 event due to COVID-19. It was supposed to be held in mid-July. Instead, they're rescheduling for June 26th and 27th next summer. The 2021 show will feature the U.S. Navy Blue Angels and will be held on what's usually the weekend right after Grandma's Marathon, so you can expect a, expect a lot of people in town. The air show typically draws more than 50,000 people to the Duluth Airport each year. Well, it is that time of the show again where we get to talk about adoptable pets. Today's pet comes to us from the Shawamigan Humane Association. Meet Angler. He has a bit of a stubborn streak and isn't overly trusting either, but... Uh, he doesn't do that great with dogs, kids, or other cats. You could say he is the ultimate grumpy cat. He may not be extroverted, uh, and you might not introduce him to your friends, but he can be the perfect cat to isolate with as long as you don't try to force his love. Once he trusts you and he's had time to warm up to you, he can be very affectionate, though. Just know that he can be very demanding for attention on his own terms. <laughs> Well, if you think you have what it takes to be Angler's human, you can apply for him today by calling that phone number on your screen. Still to come, how Wisconsin is re-evaluating how it handles absentee voting during the COVID-19 pandemic. Purdy Lawn Service, offering mowing, fertilizing, aerating, landscaping, and snow removal in the Duluth Superior area. Call 218-341-9860 for free estimates and visit us on Facebook. Purdy Lawn Service, unbeatable quality and service. Now hiring seasonal and full-time employees. work hard for your money and deserve to see it go the extra mile. Join us Wednesday mornings and hear from local experts on tips to better manage your finances in Eye on Money on Live Local CBS3. Brought to you by MPPL Financial. And when we, we get back, are people going to have money? And I think people are going to be raring to do something. It really just kind of came to a screeching halt. <laughs> Another industry feeling big impacts from the COVID-19 pandemic, the Luth's local arts community. From live theater to musicians to photographers, I'm taking a closer look at how their daily lives have changed and how these artists are working to recover. Surviving the intermission, Friday at 10. I'm Dr. Carolyn Phelps, licensed psychologist. In the wake of this pandemic, many of us are feeling overchallenged and overwhelmed. If you or someone you care about is struggling with anxiety, depression, or any other mental health problem, please know this, getting help matters. Mental health care is essential care and it's still available. Simply contact a local mental health care provider yourself or ask someone you trust whom they'd recommend. Now more than ever, reach out for help. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. Learn more at wearebroadcasters.com slash hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. So what do you see? I have lived my life for this moment. Expect the unexpected. Engage. Trust me, it's a good story. The future is now. And it will be our privilege to make that future bright. Yeah. <laughs> I am most 
most excited about getting to really know the viewers in the Northland and getting to show my personality too and letting the Northland kind of get to know me. I'm a very energetic person. I'm always at 100 and I'm always excited to be able to tell stories and being able to have a little bit of fun with it too. And I think that's really, really important on a morning show as well because you need that energy in the morning to wake you up. Wake up with Austin and Jenna at 5 a.m. Watch Anthony Matt weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS3 Duluth. Wisconsin officials are working on a host of changes to the absentee voting process as they prepare for a flood of mail-in ballots come November. A new report estimates that two-thirds of November's ballots will come through the mail as voters try to avoid the polls out of coronavirus fears. The report also shows Wisconsin's Elections Commission is working on installing tracking technology on mail-in ballots. The state is also considering mailing ballot application forms to all voters and improving photo ID uploads as well. Senator Tina Smith is pushing to pass a bill that will help Minnesota's smaller cities during the pandemic. At the end of March, the federal government passed the CARES Act that provided money for individuals and cities that have a population over 500,000. Smith says this bill was a good start, but it left out all the smaller towns and cities across the state. She says smaller cities like Duluth are seeing huge budget shortfalls and she doesn't want to see any layoffs to essential city positions. You know, cities, the big expenses that they have are police and fire and the basic social services that, that communities need. So I think it's urgently important that the federal government step up and help communities like Duluth and, and small towns and communities all over the state. She says the bill successfully passed through the House and she's hopeful it will pass through the Senate too. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, disaster in Michigan. A major dam failure causes massive flooding. 10,000 are forced to evacuate as shelters try to enforce social distancing. Plus our series, Racing to a Cure, why a coronavirus vaccine administered to monkeys is giving scientists a reason to hope. And with summer right around the corner, how some Americans are returning to a low-tech outdoor activity to ride out the pandemic. That's all tonight right here on the CBS Evening News. Find your favorite CW shows on the Duluth CW, cable, satellite, over the air, and streaming on KDLH Duluth. Do you need help with debt relief? Call Yvonne Nashad Novak Law to get expert legal advice today. Call 218-720-2888. Here at the Colorado Group, the health and well-being of our customers and employees is our top priority. Kohler has been privileged to serve this community for over 50 years. Our sales, service, and parts departments are open to serve you by appointment in order to provide a safe and healthy dealership visit. If you cannot make it to us, we will gladly come to you with a non-contact shopping or service experience. Please visit Colorado.com to set up your appointment today at any one of our family-owned dealerships. For the news that impacts you most, turn to Live Local CBS 3. Wake up with Austin and Jenna at 5 a.m. Businesses are doing their best to make up for it. Temperatures have been cooler by the lake, warmer inland. That should hold true for the next couple days. Tonight at 6 on CBS 3. Classic Rock KQ is once again the Northland's number one radio station. The KQ Morning Show, the most listened to radio program in the Northland. The KQ Train Red, the Northland's number one afternoon show. Thank you for making us the Northland's number one radio station. 95 KQDS. They're live, they're local. Watch the CBS 3 News with Kristen Bakke and Anthony Matt tonight at 6, right after the CBS Evening News at 5.30. For breaking stories that impact the Northland most, turn to CBS 3. Watch Anthony Mann weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS 3 Duluth. Find your favorite CW shows on the Duluth CW, cable, satellite, over the air, and streaming on KDLH Duluth. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on live local CBS 3. Watch Anthony Mann weekdays at 6 and 10 p.m. on live local CBS 3 Duluth. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here is a live look from Canal Park this Wednesday afternoon. Let's take a quick look back at some of today's top stories and a peek at what's coming up tonight at 6. 260 people are out of work tonight. Duluth Aviation Company AAR announced that it is closing down permanently. 
AAR is closely tied to Duluth's aviation sector, which refurbish refurbishes planes for companies like United and inspects and redoes everything from engines to the seating. Coming up tonight, we'll be learning more about AAR's history with the city and how this closure could have lasting impacts. Minnesota leaders also announced today new guidelines allowing more businesses to open across the state come June 1st. Bars and restaurants will be allowed to open, but only for outdoor seating and at a limited capacity. Tables have to be six feet away from each other. Servers have to wear masks and reservations are required. Salons, barbershops ta and tattoo parlors can open on June 1st too, but only at 25% capacity. And tonight at 6, downtown Hayward businesses are ready to make up for lost revenue. This year, the town took a hit with the COVID-19 pandemic, summer events being canceled, and their main street being out of commission due to construction. But a glimmer of hope today as Hayward celebrated the reopening of their historic street. We'll have that story coming up at 6. Well, that's your news at 5. The CBS Evening News is next. We'll see you right back here at 6.